Greetings, technologists! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Yes, it's Patreon request time again! Now, today's subject is much less high profile than Battleship. Indeed, I hadn't even heard of it myself before it was requested. Nevertheless, I present to you today's subject, The Machine. Released in 2013, The Machine is a low-budget British sci-fi thriller. A cybernetic scientist creates a gynoid that might just be sentient, but his supervisors only see military potential. Well received by critics, if less so by viewers, could this movie entertain the sentient, or is it only good for Commodore 64 pixel art? There's only one way to find out. Needless to say, of course, having never heard of it before it was requested, the first time I saw it was to review it. With that said, and without further ado, I present to you, ladies, gentlemen, and all variations thereupon, today's subject, The Machine. I give you Dr. Vincent McCarthy. McCarthy, McCarthy. Oh, like the communist witch hunt guy. Coincidence, probably. Let's not dwell on it. He's testing cybernetic implants for brain-damaged patients. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. Vincent seeks a new assistant, which introduces him to Ava. Now, Vincent's daughter suffers from Rett Syndrome, an aberrant brain disorder. And all of the tech he's working on is actually a smokescreen for tech that he could hopefully use to improve her quality of life. Unfortunately, you know, military, which is always rawr weapons in movies like this regardless of country, because everybody thinks that America is the world. Sad, really. Still, let's move on. And so, Ava joins the team. And she immediately starts snooping, which of course doesn't endear her to facility head, Thompson. But Ava endears herself to Vincent, by offering to help him cure his brain-damaged daughter. And is swiftly assassinated for her trouble. Thompson witnesses Ava's assassination from his office. But seems strangely unmoved by all of this. Could he have had a hand in it? Never even alluded to. Except later, when they use the assassin to teach Machine to kill. Vincent moves forward with Ava's work, assembling a gynoid body. But Thompson sees only a weapon. Let's make it angry. Now, at the beginning of the movie, Vincent was working on cybernetic implants to restore healthy function to damaged brains. Apparently it worked better than he thought, and they've even developed their own cyborg language. And so Thompson begins his sinister machinations. I killed a man because I didn't want to. Vincent protests, but Thompson only wants results. Vincent's daughter sadly dies. Luckily, he took the precaution of scanning her brain, in case he could repair it. But now Thompson has a bargaining chip to keep our protagonist in line. This is the last remaining copy of your Mary's brain. And this leads to another House of Love top tip. Always keep and secure your backups. Especially if you've got sensitive or secret data. And so, Machine must lose her soul. But oh dear, Thompson lied. Luckily, so did Vincent, who only disarmed the failsafe. And so the stage is set for an action-packed breakout, as the cyborgs that guard the base turn on their masters. Thompson attempts to play his hand, but head cyborg Suri is protective of her boys. 
and Thompson's karmic fate lies in our heroine's thumbs. And so our movie ends with father and daughter reunited along with a new stepmom. So that was The Machine. Made for less than a million, don't you know? But I can't put this one into the house of love. This isn't a family film, not least for its blood and incidental nudity. And of course the question of artificial consciousness and the nature of humanity in a digital age. As ever, such questions are not answered, but we continue to ask them. And for all its twists and turns, the plot is rather predictable. Evil facility manager wants the ultimate weapon, single father wants to save a brain damaged daughter with his research, greatest failing turns out to be greatest asset. And of course, born in captivity, wants to be free, eventually breaks out, enjoys freedom. And while it's all solidly done and feels serious enough, it's unspectacular, uninspired even. The look of the film gives it the feel of a one-off TV drama, and only the copious buckets of blood and cracked arms, along with the revealing skin suit and moments of nudity, belie its cinematic roots. And the characters are very one note. Dennis Lawson's Thompson is the evil scheming manipulator, justifying the ends with the means, and suffering his karmic fate. Toby Stevens is all stubble and misty eyes as Dr. McCarthy, creator of AI and recruiter of Katie Lotz's Ava whose face is used for Machine, and of her performance as Machine, she too puts in a good enough stint, all wide-eyed, childlike wonder. But the one thing I will compliment this movie on is its Machine language. Though, watching without subtitles as I did, one may be lost at first to some side character's motivations. And I can't really criticise the flow of the movie. Scene follows scene, time is skipped over in montage, and everything plays out at a natural feeling pace. Which is okay for 85 minutes plus credits, but the whole thing never really seems to be much more than the sum of its parts. Not to mention that the subplot of the grieving mother struggling to get the truth of her son's disappearance goes nowhere, and doesn't really add much to the movie at all, other than a cheap shot to get Ava out of the way. All in all then, if this is the future of artificial consciousness, then Bren Maguire's got nothing to worry about. Well, never mind. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you better days and better movies. So long, folks.